friends, listen up. Today's run is vitally important to our cause. Set your frequencies to Dice Time, a Star Wars Legion podcast and part of the Legion Academy Collective. Your lead wing captain today will be Ben Gentron, and your support ship leader will be Paul Watson. Let's show them what we're made of, Rebels. Uh, wh- 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 ah! Oh, just disgusting. Oh, oh god. Oh. Man, it, it stinks in here. Oh god, okay. Uh, well, uh, welcome to Dice Time, everybody. Uh, I- I'm Ben Jetron. I'm Paul Watson. And we currently are, I guess, stuck in this, uh, trash compactor. I- I don't know why you thought it was a better idea for us to jump in here, Paul, but, uh, you know, I trust you. I regret my decision. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, this is, this is gross in here. I can smell every bit of all the trash in this room, and I smell half of it is already stuck to both of us. Yeah. So I can't wait to bring that smell back to the, back to the truck. We gotta figure out how to get out of here. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, let me see if we can call our droid to uh, to help us out of here. 3PO? 3PO? Nah, it doesn't sound like he's there right now, so uh, we're just going to have to wing it for now and hope that he can, uh, hope he hope he picks up his comlink sometime soon. So, Paul, uh, aside from being covered in trash, uh, how are you doing since uh, since last month? You uh, been doing been doing well, just in general? Keeping busy. Um, yep. a, lot of, a lot of Star Wars stuff in the last month, which is awesome. That is true. Lots of good Trying Star Wars stuff. To... Oh yeah, and more more to come. <laughs> and lots more to come still. We have um lots of uh, lots of things to talk about today. So we're going to be talking about uh obviously if you saw the title and heard our uh silly intro, we will be talking about the uh Dianoga scenario today. Then we also are going to be talking about the things that we didn't get to talk about last month because there was Star Wars Celebration, which sadly none of us got to go to this year. But uh, we did get to hear all of the cool spoils and leaks and things, uh, so there were a couple things that were shown off. Uh, aside from that, there was also the uh, Shadow Collective stuff. M- pretty much most of everything else coming out in that wave has all been leaked uh, or spoiled, shown off, whatever you want to say. Um, but we're probably not going to hit all of that today because we already have a rough enough show like with the content that we've got. But I would still like for us to talk about the new Bounty Hunter key, uh cards because those just got shown off as a time of recording a couple days ago i should say but yeah so all of that is uh gonna be in tonight's super awesome jam-packed show and uh but first why don't we spin the tale real briefly about our round two of friday night fights is the league yeah we're gonna be talking about this for tens of seconds (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's not not going to be great. Um, I'm going to start off with an apology to my two opponents that I kind of ghosted because things got busy for me. Life caught up to me, and I was only able to get one of my games in, and it was a rematch from round one. <laughs> uh, I was playing um, Dan from Australia. And we had a, a good rematch. He beat me the first round. Um, with Anakin and some clones against my Luke and my, like, Hoth defense force. Um, and then this round, he had uh, just a ton of clone troopers and two of the uh, support platforms for the clones, which was a uh, fun list to, to to play against and for him to run um, with the beam cannons on it. That was... It was rough. I was getting shot a lot by that. Um, and I had a, um, an op Luke, uh, and a bus and yep. a speeder and then oh, yeah, just a match. bunch of, bunch of troopers. And so, um, Luke did work, um, like he does, right? <laughs> and <laughs> he was, uh, he did nothing for a while and then, I think in one turn he ended up losing both of his speeders. One of them went from full health to nothing as Luke just, you know, double attacked it and it was gone. Um, so it, it, it got brutal really quick, which I mean, Light. again, that's one of the things that Luke does, right? Yep. And, uh, unfortunately that's the extent of my league and I, uh, have a vacation coming up with my family here 
Uh, hey. but, so I will be taking at least a break for the next round. Um, so I don't end up doing the same thing again to my opponents because not cool. So again, apologies. Well, I should, uh, I'm going to follow that up with my glorious tale of all zero games that I got to play in round two. Um, we did have one of our guys drop pretty much right away as the round started. And then one of our guys was moving during the time of the round. So that took up a lot of his time as well. And then me and that guy, and then me and the uh, fourth guy all just never really got around to scheduling our stuff. I remember that we both would pitch days and then we would either say yes or no, but then we would never, none of us ever hard like second confirmed any of our dates. So it, Got too busy, I guess, for everybody. It, our wavelengths did not connect. So uh, no games for me round two, and I was sad. But I signed up for round three, because mostly because I didn't play anything in round two, and I wanted to redeem myself a little bit. So uh, we have that to look forward to. Moving on into our main topic today. Well, I won't say our main topic, but one of our main topics. I would like to talk about the new scenario of the Dianoga. The Unnatural Resources Organized Play Kit from Atomic Mass Games. So we briefly talked about this a couple, I want to say a couple shows ago, where we brought up where where it got spoiled and shown off. Um, and Paul, you were talking about how you wanted to play it. I was talking about how I wanted to play it. Um, I know that you haven't played it yet, but um, what are your thoughts? Have, have you seen anyone uh, posting about having played it or having done it? Um, I've seen, I've seen a little bit here and there. I haven't, um, taken too much of a dive into it, um, kind of on purpose. I don't want to learn how to break it. <laughs> ah, that's fair. So well, that way I, I will can tell enjoy it. I was going to say, you'll, unless you want to mute yourself or like mute me or something, I, I am going to tell my story, which I don't think breaks anything. I don't think you'll learn anything game breaking from me, Paul. <laughs> you you should know me better. I'm just gonna tell you what wild, stupid crap I did, and you're just gonna be like, "Wow, that's a that's a choice." <laughs> uh, for those of you who uh, are unfamiliar, the the unnatural resources op kit is a scenario uh, organized play kit that went out to uh, stores that ordered them. It is the first organized play kit to come out of Atomic Mass Games. And they had lots of fun and amazing things that you could do with this scenario. So there were, it, coming in the kit, there is enough resources that are unnatural. For every player, reasonably, I think the kit says how many players it can accommodate for. But there was enough for us to be able to give out the set of tokens and the giant card uh, for every person that showed up to the event. Which we didn't have many, but uh, we did have enough. So uh, if you're if you got a small community who's getting that kit, all of you should be able to easily be able to walk away with that uh, with enough kit for you to be able to play it uh, later. And then it also came with a alternate art force push upgrade card. So that was real sweet. And it's got Anakin force pushing Saj Ventress on it. It's a uh, it's a reference to the old Tartakovsky Clone Wars, and if it's not, then they really made a weird choice that perfectly fit with it. But I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, good old reference to the old Tartakovsky animated Clone Wars, and it's beautiful. I've been seeing people like fighting for trying to get these. Yeah, no, it looks really good. So, uh, man, I gotta I gotta dig through this trash here because I I had that card a second ago, and I'm trying to find it. Um. I might have to go underwater here. Uh, uh, give me just a sec. Uh, 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 Paul, talk about what kind of list you would want to play if you were playing uh, in the Dianoga expansion. If you had to fight a Dianoga, what kind of list would you think about bringing? Yeah, I know that um, Ben and I were talking originally. Do we go for, like, do you make a list that just ignores some of the rules? So, like, do you do repulsors and, and try to do that kind of stuff? Um and then not have that interaction going at all, or do you do the opposite? And so um, I, I think, I don't know, me, I just like having a balance of stuff in my list in general. So 
uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to giving it a go and just bringing a little bit of everything. Some stuff that can ignore it, some stuff that interacts well with it. <sighs> oh, God. All right, I found it. I think I found a bunch of other stuff, but th- those are in my boots now. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, and uh, along the lines of what you were talking about is kind of like the list that I brought, but we'll get into that in just a second. Um, cause yeah, I did use a little bit of our conversation that we had to, to mess around and see what I could make. And, uh, but anyway, real quick. So, uh, unnatural resources. Um, I'm not going to read all the extra, I'm, I'm going to abridge this in case you've already played it and you already know what's going on. But, um, uh, much like every other scenario that's been released so far, there are disallowed keywords, uh, which in this case include bounty, infiltrate and secret mission. Um, all the scenarios that have been released so far have this rule. They just haven't printed them on the cards, but we did find it in the RRG uh, a long time ago when Josh and I had a really unfair game of ATSC, <laughs> and we went, wow, that was kind of busted. They should they should make that keyword illegal. And then we looked in the RRG, and we we're like, oh, look, it's illegal. Wow, of course it wasn't. No wonder it was no fun. <laughs> um, so army building is the same. Uh, you build an 800-point list that uh, matches all the regular requirements of the main game. Um, there is a special setup rule of setting these seven gas vents out, and on this giant card that uh, everyone can definitely see by listening to an audio podcast, uh, it does have a picture of where to put those cards and a clear representation on a, like, deployment. So that is easy to establish. Uh, obscuring gas means that every trooper unit that has a unit leader at range one of the gas event improves their cover by one. So they're like smoke grenades. The objectives of the games are like smoke grenades, which are kind of nice. Yeah. Um, the roaming Dianoga obviously roams around. Uh, he does lots of crazy stuff. Um, he gets replaced every round, uh, like range two of his current position based on who's losing. Uh, the the person who's losing or has the fewest command points gets to move it range two. And every time this thing moves, oh, well, I should say, the other way it moves is when a non-repulsor unit moves a standard move within range one of the token. And immediately after that unit completes that move, the one who controlled it moves the Dianoga range two of its current position. So it's kind of like... Instead of running away from the Dianoga, you're actually kind of charging it because mm-hmm. you're running at it, and then you get to send it over to your opponent. And man, let me tell you, this thing is a bomb. This thing puts explosions to shame. <laughs> uh, because when this thing moves, every time it finishes its move, so that's at the end of the round, or every time that you move a unit within range one of it to push it, every time this happens... After the roaming Dinoga is placed or a non-repulsor unit ends its activation at range one of it, so let's say you ended your activation somehow in range one, and the and it was a really corner case because that means that you didn't move. So that meant it was already at range one of you, and you, like, I don't know, dodged and shot. So you just stayed where you were. But you were still in range one of it. That would be a case. That didn't come up in our game because I don't think we were thinking that way because we were like, if this thing's near us, we want to push it. Uh... But every time it does this, you roll three red defense dice, and each non-repulsor unit at range one of the Dianoga token takes one suppression token for each block that you roll, and suffers one wound for each surge result you you roll. And, who buddy, this thing got nasty. Uh, this thing got disgusting. And then, obviously, everyone gains one victory token for each objective they control at the end of a round. And at the end of the round, or if a player has 14 or more victory tokens uh, than the other than the other guy, uh, game ends, uh, or the game ends after six rounds as normal. So I played and I brought with me uh, the best army under the sun, which means rebels. And I kind of went along the lines of what uh, Paul and I were discussing. I think a couple shows ago where we were thinking like, do we bring non repul or like repulsor stuff and then just try to ignore the Dianoga? So I, I played with that a little bit. So I made a 10 act rebel list, 795 points that was led by general Leo Organa with vigilance as her only upgrade. I brought an air speeder with Shriv and the power harpoon. 
I brought a second airspeeder with a hotshot pilot and a power harpoon. And I brought two Z6 Rebels, one DLT Rebel, one R5 Rebel, a strike team of snipers, and two rotary ATRTs. For a total of 795 points, 10 activations, it was what I thought would be best as a double airspeeder list for what was going to be happening. And then the ATRTs were because this thing can hand out, I realized this thing is probably going to hand out a lot of suppression. So I thought, why not bring stuff that's going to be immune to that? So I had a little bit of strategy going into this thing. And I like to think that it paid off because um, there were definitely some times where I would have been screwed by this thing had my big pieces not been repulsors. Uh, because my one of my airspeeders was definitely flying on the front line and uh, would have been hit by this thing like three times <laughs> at, at different oh, points in the dang. game. Uh, my opponent was uh, playing the uh, greatest, not not uh, not the army that everyone's ditching now, army, the clones. And I played against uh, Brendan Bourne. I don't know if you remember Brendan, uh, Paul. Yeah, but um, yeah, he's a super cool guy. He uh, he brought his, he brought his w- super well, amazingly award winning painted clone army uh, to come and play. However, he did not know that the uh, disallowed keywords were disallowed because he didn't know what we were doing on natural resources that day. So he brought a double ba- uh, double secret mission list. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he brought uh, Padme, uh, R two. And clone commander with a bunch of clones that all had different stuff and a lat, uh, which was meant for delivering R2D2 to the deployment, which it uh, did not really do uh, yeah. because we were like, secret mission can't be used. And he's like, well, and I gave him what we, we went back and forth. We were like, do you want to remake your list like real quick? Like I brought other stuff. If you didn't bring your other stuff, I could I, uh, we can we can reconfigure your list into, you know, Obi-Wan or Anakin or Yoda or something. And he finally he, he made the he made the decision that I was just like, I respect it. Let's go. He was like, you know what? I brought it. I'm just going to ride it out. And who knows? It might be secret meta for this. Who knows? Let's do it. <laughs> so, yeah, we uh we we rode we rode on it and we were just like let's go let's do it so uh, we played our game and let me tell you unnatural resources is absolutely the most deadly game of hacky sack you've ever played <laughs> uh, because it's literally just you and your opponent throwing a hot potato at each other and it just bombing uh, if for those of you that want super leet strats. I don't recommend you bring a a ball army to this game mode <laughs> because when this thing when I managed to get this thing to hit his clone ball it would take out so it would do so much damage to the wall all at once mm. it was nasty so uh I think rebels is probably the way to go on this one uh or maybe droids just because they will ignore all the suppression that gets handed out droids might be a good might be a cool choice yeah. Um, just be aware that this thing has the potential to hand out three suppression to all of your units all at once. So, or all the ones that can reach at least. So, uh, just be aware of that. And we definitely had turns where, uh, I would get the, I would get it thrown at me and it w- I would take two suppression and one wound on all of my units that were in range one, which was a lot at the time. And there were definitely times where I would throw it at him and it would uh, roll into three blanks and nothing would happen to him. So uh, those things can happen. Uh, definitely be aware about the ceiling and the floor of what that roll can be. And uh, it is nice and gambly. I love it. My favorite kind of thing. Uh, so without going too in-depth into battle report, let's just say uh, uh, Padme was the first casualty, I think, of the, uh, well, the first, like, named casualty of the Dianoga. Um, I'm not going to make any any kind of joke of, uh, I've seen this movie, I know where this is going kind of joke, but uh, that's definitely what happened. <laughs> she uh, she was down, out for the count, very fast in the game. Um, and then it was mostly just a game of hot potato going back and forth. Um, the repulsors and the, and the airspeeders I thought did really well, uh, especially against clones 
who were doing a lot of fire supporting, trying to uh, get those crits together, trying to pull their crits together and getting them uh, and getting them into my into my big old vehicles. But uh, they did he, they did a really good job holding on. There was definitely one time where three random clones decided we're just going to shoot this thing and hope we get a crit. Uh, I think they got two to three crits, and I blanked everything, and that speeder died. <laughs> so oh, wow. it was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> I thought this thing was going to have at least another turn in it, but okay. Um, there was a lot of death that went back and forth, and actually, for most of the game, I was losing pretty consecutively. I don't think there was a turn, an end of turn, where I was winning. Um... The final score ended up being, like, 12 to, I think, 7 or 8, maybe 6 or 7, somewhere in that ballpark. I actually should have marked it down, but um, I know he had, like, 12 points at the end, and I had, like, 6. I, I like, score-wise, had no chance of catching him. So, in round 5 and 6, I went, I have no chance of catching this man based on what he's got left, so I'm just going to have to table him. And that's just going to have to be my strategy. So I abandoned the uh, objectives and just started doing everything I needed to in order to go for the tabling. And literally on the last round, uh, everything shook out in the favor of R2-D2 being the last model that he had on the board with one wound left. And I had one rotary RT as my last activation who had to make the shot to kill R2-D2. And the game was going to be decided based on that. So I rolled all the dice after uh, dice shook out and everything. Uh, he had, I think, three hits that he had to roll. I can't remember if R2 had one or two health, but he had like three or four defense dice he had to make. And he was, and it was like, it's going to come down to this last dice roll. Who wins the game? And those are the kind of games that I love. Uh, and then, uh, he rolled and R2 died. So, uh, the rebels got to take the victory by tabling the clones in the literal last activation, last attack, or like last action, last dice roll of the game was the deciding wow. factor. That, it was incredibly close. That was one of the most fun games of Legion I've probably ever played. But, the, uh, the Dianoga is no joke. Do not underestimate the amount of damage that thing can do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like fun. It's and it's always good when the games come down to like the very last die roll. I know. I was like, man, so much had to happen for this to come down to literally the last dice roll. Uh so at one point, and I should say this in case uh people want to have some kind of knowledge going into this again as well. There was a strategy that Brendan en- ended up doing at one point. Where I would, where I was, we were throwing the Dianoga back and forth, and at one point he took it and said, you know what, I'm tired of getting hot potatoed by this and getting the bad end of the stick here. Uh, He did a move action, and then instead of throwing it back to me, he threw it backwards across to his back, to like his uh, back corner, where it wasn't going to do anything for the rest of the round. Mm. And he was like, just get this thing away from me because it's killing me. <laughs> and so he threw it backward, and then it was basically not a factor for the rest of that turn because nobody could reach it in which to, in which to push it. But then at the end of the round, I got to move it back because I was losing. So I got to move it back to his line, and then with his first move action he would do, he would send it back. So uh, interesting. for like the back, I want to say for the back three turns, so the back half of the game, uh, he was just throwing the Dianoga to be away from him and be like, get out of here. I don't want you here. <laughs> so if you find yourself in a game of hot potato where you're getting the uh, the bad end of the hot potato, uh, that's definitely an option. You could always just sacrifice the potential to throw it back and do more damage to just stop throwing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. That being said, repulsor units skirting by it are also really fun. So if you make a, uh, if you want to make a Paul Watson TM uh, triple bark list, uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. I, I don't own three barks in real life, otherwise I would have tried something like that. I think that would be really funny. Triple bark, double lat. <laughs> <laughs> triple bark, double lat. Yeah, exactly. Just all just air vehicles. Almost all of your army just immune to it. <laughs> Get two of your core put in the lats so that they 
are also f- safe from it until they get to where they want to go. Yep, you just, and then but, you just keep one core back. Okay, 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 but here's the thing, though, and this is something that I realized uh, afterward. Uh, trooper units are the only ones who can claim the gas vents. It is not a case of unit leader, of just regular unit leader, because to yeah. claim the gas vent, you have to have thumbs. So that might be, <laughs> that might be the bad side of a uh, triple bark, double lat, oh, for lots sure. of PM list. Uh, yeah, because then I found that out with my ATRTs, because I deployed in a way where I thought, oh, my ATRTs will score these ones, and then the rest of my army will go for these other ones. And then I looked, and I was like, oh, a player controls an objective token if a friendly trooper unit leader is in base contact with the token, and no enemy trooper unit leaders are in base contact with that token. And I went, oh, we're playing with thumbs. Uh, I messed up on my deployment over here. <laughs> yeah. What a goof. So that's something to be aware of. That sh- that's something I should tell everyone to be aware of when they're thinking, oh, I'll just bring repulsors and vehicles that don't get suppressed. Maybe don't bring too many because you still need scoring units and you need a lot of them because there are seven objectives and your opponent has the potential of scoring a lot of points on you if you don't uh, claim your own and you will be losing very fast. Yeah. So I think that... Uh, I think that pretty much sums that up, just because uh, we sadly don't have a game or any experience of yours to uh, to uh, with, withdraw upon. Yeah, no, I'm but, excited to give that one a go, though. Um, I will say running a uh, scenario-based event at your store is really cool. Um, it is really fun to get everybody, if you're looking for something to do to spice up your community and try something fun, obviously this just came out, so this is probably already on people's dockets, but if you're, but if you're not thinking about this one or you didn't get this one for some reason or you couldn't, uh, if somebody in your group has the, or multiple people in your group even have the, uh, the downed ATST or the crash escape pod, that still makes a great, uh, event. And we're probably going to be doing that at Muncie here in the next couple months if we get, uh, stale again. I know next month we are going to be doing skirmish. In case anyone is uh, listening to this and knows that they want to come to Muncie uh, in the month of June, uh, by the time this episode releases, it'll be two Saturdays from then. We are going to be in Muncie, Muncie, Indiana, at Atomic Comics at June June eighteenth, and we are going to be doing skirmish. Uh, again, because we have some new players in the community who don't have like 800 points worth, or if they do, they are still learning the game. Uh, and my buddies that I like to bring, uh, love to play skirmish and that's their favorite game mode. So, uh, they all said like, I have like four or five people that all said that this works for them next month. So that's what we're doing. So, uh, it'll be skirmish in June in Muncie if you decide to go. But, um, if you're, and and here's my and here's my secret other plug that you didn't expect, Paul. If you're in the Michigan area, I've got an event for you. Um, oh. in Metro Detroit, Michigan, uh, there is going to be a sweet sweet round uh, on the same day. So if for some reason you decide not to go to Muncie and you and you're up in Michigan, you could go to uh, you could go to the let me see. Now it is the Eternal Games Chester uh, Eternal Games of Chesterfield is the name, and they are doing the Crash Escape Pod as an event. So they're nice. going to be doing two rounds of Crash Escape Pod and then a third round of just the standard game. So that is going to be really cool. Um, I saw that on the Star Wars Legion page um, uh, being being highlighted by Zachary Morton, which I told him that I would give a shout out because I thought this was a cool idea and that I was glad that people were doing it because we need to see more scenario out there. So uh, there you go, Zach. That one's for you. I remembered. Anyway, the doing scenario events is a lot of fun. Um, Definitely give that a shot in your, in your area. If that's something you have not done or have an interest of doing, but needed the extra motivation to do, Maybe just get the whole crew involved and say, hey, let's just all do this. And you guys are I, – I've never met anyone that said that it was not fun or that they didn't just have an absolute blast playing a wild version of uh, of Legion. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to 
uh, new stuff, spoiled stuff that's been released or has been shown off. So obviously we had Star Wars Celebration. Paul, I think we've talked about Star Wars Celebration before, but I'm going to ask again. Have you ever gone to Star Wars Celebration like any year? I have not. Okay. That's fair. It's one of those things that um, I definitely want to do. I honestly didn't even start going to, like, I hadn't even been to a convention until, like, right before COVID. I think I had oh, gone have... to a couple of, like, small conventions okay. like, for Adepticon where it was, yeah. like, my first one. Uh, I guess I went to Nova. I went to Nova was my first one, and then Adepticon. Um, but, yeah, I really didn't get into the, like, convention scene until recently, and now, like, I'm getting more into it. So it's definitely – Star Wars Celebration is definitely one of those that I want to hit up for sure. Well, I will say that uh, unless you just have boatloads of money to pour out to it, uh, maybe wait until it comes to a local-ish area. Oh, for because sure, yeah. several years, and I've been following the convention for several years before I ever got the chance to go. Uh, I, it, well, I mean, back when I was a little, like, little, little kid, it used to be in Indianapolis. And I was like, man, I used to live, like, right where they would host this freaking thing. <laughs> and then I've never gone. And then they stopped hosting it there, and they, you know, I mean, they, it travels around. Uh, but Indy used to be one of the locations that they would host it at. And I'm like, I don't blame them. The convention center in Indy is amazing and probably my favorite convention center I've ever been to. But um, they mostly have been back and forthing it between Anaheim and Europe. So I'm like, those are two locations that I can't just casually drop everything and go to, even yeah. plan everything and go to. Like, I don't have that money to just toss out right now. But, there was one year, I want to say it was 2019, let me double check that, uh, that Star Wars Celebration was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And it was 20, wait, 2019? Okay, I'm just confused now. Um, but It was it recently, was in the past Recently years. in the past couple of years, yes. Yeah. Um, let me see, because 2017 it was Orlando. Which means I, I'm, I'm almost positive it was 2019. So anyway, not getting hung up on that. Uh, but I, but I was like, you know what, Chicago, I don't know how much closer it's going to get. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to commit and I'm going to go. And I went to Star Wars Celebration in 2019. And I think I've told that story on the podcast before, probably back when, when Bob was co-hosting. Uh, but it was a, it was a bittersweet time because I went to do a lot of stuff and three fourths of the stuff that I went there to do got taken from me. Uh, in front of my eyes. <laughs> so, uh, it was bittersweet. I did get to meet a lot of really cool people though, so I don't regret the trip by any means. Uh, and I can't wait to go, to get to go again. Um, I just know that it will not be at Anaheim or Europe, uh, unless I hit the lottery in the next couple of years. But, yeah. uh, Atomic Mass Games absolutely took the initiative to show off lots and lots of cool Legion. Armada, X-Wing, all that, all their Star Wars IPs at this convention, which was not a dumb move, I would, uh, I would say. There was, um, a lot of really cool stuff shown off, uh, just to name a few. Obviously, while, while the weeks between, uh, last episode and this one, as well as during Celebration, they were showing off all the stats and cool stuff for Shadow Collective. So we've seen Maul, we've seen, uh, Gar Saxon, uh, we've seen the Mandalorian Super Commandos, which are all really cool stuff. Um, during Celebration specifically, I can note of three really cool things that they showed off, which were Din Djarin and Grogu from the Mandalorian. They showed off Ewoks. Yeah. And then they showed off a new scenario, a completely new scenario. Uh, not the, not the Dianoga one we've been talking about, but a, uh, another brand new one. Paul, did you did you did the child slash adult inside you just glow when you saw the Ewok models? <laughs> I uh, I'm definitely excited that we're getting more stuff. Um, Ewoks are one of those things that you know the, the community's been just saying that they wanted forever. See, I was going to say I, since like day one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I might be one of the people who's I don't. Know, a little more of a limb than the Ewoks, but 
I'm glad to see them because I'm hopeful that that means we're one step closer to a Gungan army. <laughs> I want the big Famba and a giant shield generator. Yeah. <laughs> and just all the Gungans running around with their energy shields and stuff and just, to, yeah. So, like, the Ewoks are one step closer to that. So I'm really excited to see what they um, come out with the Ewoks and how they're incorporated into what we already have and you know, there's some. They're doing some interesting things with these bounty hunters. Are they going to do some interesting things with these Ewoks? Or right? Like, yeah, I'm just. I'm excited to see what what that means and what they come up with too. Because I mean, in other games, there are plenty of named Ewoks. So what is that? What is that going to look like for for these you know units when they come out? Are we going to have a lot of named um, like leaders or like heavies oh, or whatever to. like? Um, you know, like fives and echo and those kinds of things. Yeah. Are we we're also gonna going to wicked, see wicked? Chief yeah. Chirpa. Yeah. Are we going to see like chief chirpa as a, as like a Wookiee chieftain is like yeah, where it's an actual yeah. commander. Are we going to see it, like an operative wicket or <laughs> like, you know, like I'm just really interested to see what we, what we get and, you know, maybe some unique battle forces, I'm assuming, right? We're going to have to have, with that coming out, like some Endor battle forces that yeah. are going to come out for both Empire and Rebels that just are going to, you know, play into that theme, which is going to be just great. Like, I, I'm super excited for, for that kind of stuff that we have coming in the future, so... Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see how this uh how all of it kind of rolls down. I was telling Trista, I said, so they announced Ewoks for uh, Legion, and she was just like, oh, interesting. And I was just like, it's uh, something that the community has been wanting since like year one. And she's like, really? Like confused? Like people want people wanted Ewoks in Legion? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, some people really really wanted them. I said, that's not even the surprising one for me. I said the surprising one for me is that like. Since year one, people have been screaming to get Gungan Army. Yeah. And she's like, and that one, yeah, she was just, she had the same reaction. She was just like, seriously? <laughs> like, people want that? <laughs> yeah, it's, re it's really interesting, um, that those are some of the things that are just standouts for people. And yeah, it's, it, it's cool that we have them. It'll be really interesting to see what that means for the future of Legion as we, as well, we go on. And it just confirms uh, that obviously some point down the line we're going to have to get Operative Jar Jar. I, I mean, you would assume, right? Like I, we're we're got to get there eventually. And I and I can already tell you what he's going to give you back fifteen to thirty points back into your list, and he's going to bring three flaw cards. Yeah, he's going to do something <laughs> great for you and something terrible for you, <laughs> and you're going to have zero control over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my hope. Man, if they make Jar Jar, like, I've got to throw him in my list because I know he would be, like, a gambly aspect of... Uh, oh, yeah. He's, yeah, it's just, like, he's it's exactly just your play style. Yeah, <laughs> this could be great for me, or it's going to backfire. <laughs> it has a high ceiling, and it also has a really low floor. Let's see yeah. what happens. <laughs> it's like, I tell people that, that, yeah, that's, like, the kind of stuff that I love to see in the game, and they're like, why don't you play more Lando? And I'm like, I need to play more Lando. <laughs> Yeah. They also okay. need to make more Rebel stuff like Lando. Because I saw that, because they did that with like the AA5 upgrades where it's like, oh, roll dice and this is how many you get based on that. And I'm like, I want to see more of this in Rebels. Like, I want this to be their faction identity. Yeah. I, I'm really interested to see with the Ewoks if they, um, come out with some kind of, um, mechanic or something for them where they have a bunch of traps. Oh, and yeah. Stuff like tokens that you place on the board, and, like, some of them are going to be nothing for your opponent, and then other ones are going to be, like, terrible for them, right? Maybe, like, like, uh, maybe like Cad Bane's uh, yes, tokens? Yes, absolutely. That's yeah. exactly yeah, what that I was thinking. Yeah, that would be cool. Like, maybe for each unit of Ewok or whatever you put out, you can also put out two tokens and one of them is like a nothing token and one of them is a, is it a trap? you know, an, a trap where... Oh, that'd be so much fun. Or maybe even like, like Cad Bane does, they don't even start on the board and they can like pop oh, and they up just ambush. on the tokens. <laughs> they ambush on the tokens. Like, um, yeah. That's what I was yeah, thinking I think, was like, how would I do the traps? And I'm like, 
you could make Ewok command cards that just give commands to Ewoks or something, and then have it be like uh, an airstrike, but then just make it like the log trap. So yep. you can just pick a unit that's out there, and it's just like, oh, they sprung the trap, boom, hit yeah, them with I the think ball. It'll, it'll be really interesting. I mean, there's so many different things that they could do. It just opens up a whole new world of yeah. uh, of manipulating, you know, mechanics that they already kind of have in place, and yep. and seeing what they they can do with it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be really, uh, and I'm sure you know people are gonna want want to run like it's gonna be, uh. Well, one of those battle forces, right? It's going to be unique, and it's going to be your leader has to be C three PO. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and all Ewoks from then on out. It's Command be great. Commander profile for C three PO confirmed. <laughs> Dice time exclusive. It's been confirmed. He's he's still gonna no. It's just gonna be his upgrade card. He's still just terrible, but he has to be your leader. But he's your nominated commander. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, then I just have to take R two as an operative in that list because obviously I can do that, right? He, he's he's God's chosen. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be so much fun to see what they come out with. And kind of and and I love the battle forces stuff because like it adds that like it adds like a semi layer of narrative to what you're doing and I really and you know me and I know you we both really love like narrative stuff in Legion. Oh for and sure. that kind of ties back into this uh new scenario that's coming out though. So I've read through it a couple times and from what I understand it feels to me like the most narrative driven uh scenario so far. And I believe it's also a skirmish scenario because one of the armies can only be 400 points. And it is, uh, and the army building rules on the card, uh, says that players use the Legion skirmish format army building rules, uh, with the red player building a list that cannot exceed 400 points and neither army can include support units. So. No barks for you, Paul. No. No barks. I'm sorry. They no take ATRGs. My support that's units. literally. I was gonna say that's literally. Paul's never gonna play this scenario. Everyone. <laughs> Paul's like, screw I, the scenario. Keep it away from me. <laughs> it'll still be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun for other people. Is what he means. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, I literally have the support uh, unit rank tattooed on me. So uh, for them to strip me of it is 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 terrible heresy, I say. Yep, smiling on the outside, dying on in the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, the scenario is called Dynamic Exit, and I'm not going to deep dive into it like I did with the uh, uh, with the Dianoga, but the uh, disallowed keywords are the same, except they also disallow Scout. So that's the first time that another a fourth keyword has been disallowed in a scenario. The Scout keyword is not allowed. And uh, it does say on it, it does advertise what you can do for a more narrative-driven experience, which is that uh, players should collaborate during the list building uh, in order to tell a specific story. Mm. And I think that's really cool. I like that. I like that they uh, inc- just included that as a line. Obviously, you could do that with literally any game you do, but um, I thought that was a, a nice addition to show that uh, Atomic Mass is thinking about... Uh, having a narrative experience with these scenarios and uh, with the game. And I really, I really like that. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think that's important with star Wars. Oh, especially with star Wars. Cause that's like half the reason you choose this game over anything else. As far as right. war game goes, is like, you want to play star Wars. You want to, you want to live out star Wars. So, Absolutely. um, yeah, it does say before building armies, you you and your opponent are going to decide who is blue and who is red. And that's obviously the case with most scenarios because most, uh, I won't say most, but some of the scenarios there are, excuse me, different rules between blue and red player of what their armies can be. Um, some of them are based on, like, if you're playing a two-part scenario based on the previous round's results, you get to decide who's who and who does what. Um, some of them are just right out the gate like this one. So this is... Uh, so from what I can tell, this is mostly supposed to be like a heist scenario. Mm-hmm. So 
you're you have these like s- these computer terminals, these precious cargo tokens, and you're mostly trying to get the like the offensive players trying to get these get these tokens, which I I believe is the blue players, the offensive one here, uh, do, commencing the heist, while the red player is the one kind of defending against the heist, and they have all these mechanics uh, in place. Uh, called flat footed, which are for the Red Army's units in which to show that they are not aware that the blue player is coming to attack them. So the blue player has an element of surprise that is written out mechanically through the flat footed mechanic that the red player has to deal with, which I think is really cool. And I, it is a lot of info. This car, this scenario is definitely like, three big cards of <laughs> of text. Uh and I'm I'm really curious to see how it plays out. We're not gonna like I said, we're not gonna deep dive into all the cards were shown off during celebration. So if you and you you and your friends wanted to try this scenario out now before the op kit came out or before whatever they did, go you can do it. It's on Facebook. You can go find the pictures. That's what I did. Um but the map looks really cool. There's you know an area that's kind of designated to be the base of the red player, uh, cargo and terminals get placed out everywhere. Um, there's different results for different stuff. There's a there's a unique upgrade that's just used for this game mode called Slicer Gear that you can get that the blue player I believe uh, can use to to try and uh, to to achieve their objective. Uh, it doesn't have any points on it, so I'm guessing somebody just gets it. Um, but yeah. So there's a lot of really neat, scary, cool stuff in that that I'm excited to try out at some point uh, whenever they decide to release that. Yeah. So finally, out of all the new stuff that has come out, I think we are going to spend our last little segment here talking about updated bounty hunters. Mm, yes. Because that was the good stuff. Paul? Do you mind uh, telling us kind of what this is all about? Where where are we getting these new cards from, and who are they for? Not at all. Yeah, no, I mean, these, these cards are going to be uh, really awesome. A lot of these bounty hunters needed some tweaks, and we were kind of, I think we were kind of expecting something with, you know, just how they're changing the bounty hunters and all of that. And, yeah. Um, and so, oh, and, I'm, and I'm drawing a blank, and I don't have it in front of me, the... The pack, what's what's the pack called that they're all coming uh, in? Ben, help I me out. I don't have it in front of me. I think it's the upgrade card pack. Oh, I don't want to say it's the upgrade card pack, uh, but it's something along those lines. It'll it'll be the big thick box that's not the thickest box in the Shadow Collective wave, but it will be one of them. They've showed us the bounty hunter cards, but there's still a lot of other cards that we don't see. This is true. So I, I'm interested to see what what's going on there. I'm assuming there's going to be some more cards that are have some changes to them. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that is. Maybe some more new cards um, to go cool. along with some of this stuff. Uh, who knows? Um, excited to see those. It looks like I mean we have all the the bounty hunters have new upgraded cards for them with the you know the new symbols, the new colors on them. Mm-hmm. Um, showing what factions they're in, um, or can be run in, and um, with, with updated, even some updated stats on them too, which is something that's different than previous uh, card pack releases, right? Like normally yeah, they're this just is putting like, out the same card packs with the same points values, right. like nothing's changed on them. Like these are these are actually new cards that we're seeing. Um, so I'm wondering and, if they're going to hard errata these into, like, the boxes. So, like, are they going to make, like, a new updated... Or are they going to put these cards in the in every production of Boba, Bosk, and Cad Bane that they make from here on out? Yeah, I, that's, that's an interesting question. Or are they just going to keep producing the same thing and then expect everybody to get the upgrade packs? I mean... If you're, I I guess I will say on the one hand, while from a player perspective, it might be not the coolest to make people buy a card pack just to get 
the updated card for your character. On the other hand, if you're a newer player and you're just getting in and you're buying, you know, one of the bounty hunters, you're buying Cad Bane because he is your favorite, right? Like, you've right. seen him in the shows, you really enjoy the character or whatever, and you're going to get him. And you don't have everything for Legion, like someone who has been around since the beginning. Honestly, the card packs are a really good value if you're not going to be buying you know, a, a ton of extra boxes to to get all the different cards and upgrades and all of that that you need. Um, so, you know, buying those upgrade packs isn't necessarily a terrible thing. No. But and it this would is be the, nice. It is the upgrade to, card pack, too, by the way. I did, I, did, I did look it up just to double check. It is just called the upgrade card pack, too. It would be nice of them to put the upgraded cards in, you know, obviously, like, new boxes as they... Yeah. Make them, but I but, don't. I, I'm yeah. not. I, I'm not banking on that by any means. If if what we've seen so far, I think they will just have you buy the the box that you want plus whatever upgrade card pack you're gonna need for updated cards. So like for these bounty hunters, you're gonna need this second upgrade pack. Is gonna be my guess, but I don't work for them, so <laughs> <laughs> so. Why don't we go real quick through here and just go, you know, smallest splash to biggest splash on these changes. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm interested to see how you rate that. Cause... Well, smallest, <laughs> smallest splash I actually want to give to uh, to Bosk. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think, so he was, so uh, his changes in total, uh, first off, he can now be taken in the Empire which is dope. Or I'm sorry, in the Separatist. Separatist. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, he was always being able he was always able to be taken in the Empire. Uh he in the Separatist, so now you can run him in either army, which I think is dope. I really like that. Uh, especially and it, and it makes sense thematically yeah. again, right? Like cuz right, he was exactly. around then. Yep. Um so he has been reduced to 105 points, which is a good start. I believe these mercenaries that's their like their target number is like between like 100 and in the case of Boba, he's 120. But yeah, I I think they're these mid range characters, right? Like they're not the, yeah. they're not as powerful as the Jedi's that are going to be around that 200 point range. Yeah, but possibly. they're they're much better than the generic commanders and stuff mm-hmm. at the 50 points. So, um, they have uh, they've added him with they got rid of expert climber. On him, and they gave him scale and unhindered. Or uh, they they got rid of unhindered as well. Um, yeah, which just and, makes so sense, he just has right? scale. Like, yeah, everyone scale else is- that had those naturally with the Wookies, everyone else has lost those and now are upgraded. So scale, very cool, very cool upgrade for Bosk. Absolutely. Um, independent surge two. So all the bounty hunters have independent now because uh, they all hate working with other people. They're all loners. And so they have independent on all of them, which will give them different tokens based if they do not get an order, yeah. which is definitely a interesting topic of debate as far as now do you, because when you bring these bounty hunters, it's almost positive that you're going to want to delegate them orders. Like it's almost crucial for you to do so because of like the kind of impact they're making in your list. But now I think with them kind of bringing like the points down and kind of playing with what their role is in your list, uh, they're, and, and especially with these new keywords, they're, I feel like they're kind of making it more okay for them not to be the spotlight of your list. I think, uh, if you want to just have a bounty hunter to have a bounty hunter, they can be that little, uh, that little side thing in your list. The, the very the very big side piece, but uh, uh, a side piece nonetheless, which I think is uh, interesting. I don't think it's a bad move. I don't think it's a good move. Well, I mean, I think it could be a good move. I'm just not going to say it's not a bad move. I don't think. I, I like I like I like that they do that. Yeah, just give some variety to how you might fit them in a list and play with them for sure. Right. And uh, bo- boss independent 
is Surge 2, so a couple Surge tokens, which helps him on the defense, right, because he doesn't Surge. He already Surges to crit on offense, but no Surge on defense. So yep. um, just makes him a little more tanky uh, in case he's getting shot at a little bit. And um, Again, like you said, I think this, you're probably right. This is probably the smallest splash. Like It's not bad. Right, it's um, not a it's not a small splash, but of the three, I think it's the smallest. Yeah, yeah, and having surge two, like out of all the things you want on Bosk, like eh, that that's probably the the weakest option as far as what tokens to give him. I will so well, I, I will say as far as Bosk, I would prefer him to have two surges over one dodge. Uh, no, accurate. I think I would rather have an aim over two surges, though. Oh, well, of course an aim, <laughs> if it were boss, because he's an aim machine. Right. With his, so, uh, like with that's his, where, with his command card. <laughs> that, and, and that's why I think that they did what they did with him, right? It's because you already have a bunch of ways to get him aims, and so the thing that he's the weakest on seems to be defense. And yeah. so and I they like gave that. him a way to, to beef it up a little bit. And yep. you, I agree. I'd rather have two surges than a dodge. So I think it fits well. All right. So let's move on to the, our medium splash, and this might be where we differ. Uh, so I our, think they're. I think the last two are both really good. So they are both really good. Um, however, I do feel like one of them is more of a medium splash, and one of them is more of a large splash. And in the case of medium splash. I personally would would be giving it to Boba Fett. I, yeah, I think we differ a little bit on this, and <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about why as okay. we get into Boba here. But okay. so I think just because, and I and I'm even putting into consideration <laughs> that he was like maybe arguably the most unplayable unit going into this going into this errata for sure. Um, and I'm put, I, I am putting that into consideration even when I say that he is medium splash material. Mm-hmm. So all that changed was he is, uh, he, he gained independent, obviously. So he has independent aim one or dodge one. So that means when you don't give him an order token, uh, at the start of the activation phase, he will either gain one aim or one dodge. You get to choose, which I think is really versatile and cool. And I like that on Bobo because I want Bobo to feel, uh, versatile. Uh, I am a very uh, reactive player, so I really like being able to choose what I need in a given moment based on what the scenario is. So that's nice. Um, he mostly received a lot of a uh, little bit of offensive tweaking. Uh, he did not get a new faction. You cannot play him in Separatists. I'm sorry. Uh, I would have loved it, but uh, no, you cannot. Uh, he did get a com slot, uh, and we'll have to talk about whatever that amazing secret play is for working with that when Paul uh, Legion explains it to me. Um, then he got a red, a red die added to his boot spikes. So it is now three red and he got a, uh, was there a black die that was that? Yeah. An extra black die was added to his rockets. So it is now three black. Mm-hmm. And then those rockets also gained versatile which I think is an awesome, awesome keyword for Boba Fett. Because Absolutely. especially he's got the Arsenal too, so you got him in melee, he's going to give that extra boot kick that's going to take out a potential of, like, three dudes if you just got him in a core unit, which I think is awesome. Uh, going to have to see that cinematically done, please. Uh, how you kill three people with one kick, uh, I would love to see it. I'm not being sarcastic. I would love to see it. <laughs> and then... uh being able to also at the same time shoot off one of those rockets uh, into like another squad, uh, I think is excellent. It's what I've wanted Boba to be able to do since he came out. Yeah, I and I, I think just what you're describing there is why I think Boba might be the bigger splash out of all of them for me is because he got more than just independent. Like Boba really got a bit of a buff here with oh, yeah. the, the comm slot, the independent, the versatile on the rockets, I think is huge for, for Boba and just how he plays. Um, it's one of those things where he, when he would get stuck in melee, right? Like he just, 
Um, didn't do as much because of Arsenal 2. Like, you want to be using multiple weapons with Boba all the time, and it it made it so he couldn't. And now it, it's almost like, yeah, I don't really mind getting stuck in melee, which is actually really good right now because a lot of melee units are finding their way into, you know, really good lists, right? And yeah. now he can... He can almost uh, hold up some of those melee units with all of his defensive abilities, with his, you know, ability to get the dodge with independent, the red surging saves, the impervious, and mm-hmm. then he can also kick back and shoot out with the rockets. So, um, yeah, it, it, I think just Boba got a lot in in what they added to him. Now. Uh, We'll still see, I guess, because he is quite a bit more. I mean, I say 15 points, right? Is still quite a bit more than what Bosk was. And yeah. is he that much better than Bosk? I I don't know. Um, I think for me, the big thing of why I didn't rate him higher, as far as like the kind of impact he got, is because I don't feel like. Maybe I was just overplaying how much of a rework I thought Boba needed, and then I, like, got under-delivered with the amount of upgrades that he got, or tweaks that he got. Because if yeah. we're if we're being real, it was, like, I guess it's four things, but it kind of just feels like three things. Uh, just because I don't know how often Independent's really going to play that big of a deal into getting one token. I don't know how big of an impact a comm slot is. The weapons, honestly, the rockets getting versatile and the weapons getting the extra die is really the biggest thing for me that he got switched. And I don't know if that is big enough to be enough to really make it feel like a big, huge new unit. You know what I mean? It does just feel like the reworked old unit. And I haven't, I haven't put him on the field, I'll say, since we, since we got this out. So I don't know that it's, I don't know if, if I'm just talking poo poo and he's actually like, it's actually amazing now. It's going to take a lot of uh, playtesting through uh, the community to find out where Boba's sweet spot is now and how he, how he should be run. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that he does have, which is quite strong, is that Sharpshooter 2, right? Oh, like, yeah. He's That's one of the amazing. few units in the game that has Sharpshooter 2. So giving that extra die on the rockets just really boosts his damage potential. Um and, and you know that surge to crit, that sharpshooter too. Like he, he can do a lot of different things, and yeah. it's it's really interesting. I still think. I mean, there's oh, we've always talked about this with Boba, right? Like his command cards seem more situational than the other bounty hunters, and just seem weaker and so that's the other part of this too is like okay now his stat card here got upgraded but those command cards are still weak in comparison so Mm -hmm. at what point are we going to see you know mandalorian era boba with other command cards that can go both ways or you know something like that you know what i mean um you know when are we going to see an up like the updated command cards to go along with it, or is this enough? Like, I, I, I don't know. Because and, here, and here's my thinking as well. I think that because they already have that, they've already shown off that they're going to release, like, Book of Boba Fett slash Mandalorian era Boba, that that's obviously going to come with a new profile, and that's obvious, like, he's going to be a commander, I'm sure. And then that's obviously going to come with three new command cards for Boba. Mm -hmm. I think when that happens, Boba, like this Boba Fett that we have now, is going to be infinitely better when he comes out because he's going to get access to those three command cards. Well, or or is he? I I guess that would be the other I guess because they did that with Maul. Yeah, they did that with Maul. Okay, let let me go back then and say, I really, really hope they don't miss the opportunity to give old Boba the access to those command cards because he really needs them. He really needs cool command cards that do really cool stuff for him in this profile. I think well, this profile needs to shine a little bit more. And then I guess the other question is, is do they actually give us three different Bobas and actually make it thematically in order on which ones can use what command cards? Do they give us a young Boba 
who has his set of three command cards. Listen, I won't say Boba, no. And then this Boba who can take young Boba's command cards and then his command cards. And then do we have Mandalorian, you know, uh, Book of Boba Fett Boba who can take any of the nine command cards? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I, w- so I, w- then it I would, would love that. Kind of bridge that gap from what we see with like, you know, Vader and Luke to also what we're seeing now with Maul, right? Where the, the old version of Maul you know, when he is, um, you know, Duel of the Fates, uh, does not get access to the crime syndicate lord <laughs> Maul, right? Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't get the benefit of the experiences that he's been through in his later life. Which, <laughs> from a narrative perspective, I like. Yes. From a game perspective, I understand. I won't say I love. Uh, just because I liked... I really, really liked the addition of the three extra command cards to Luke and Vader because it made those guys feel really powerful because they had a variety of cards to choose from and you didn't even have to bring all their cards, but you could. And if you did, they really shined and they really became the star of your list because they could do so much crazy stuff. And it really felt like the character was being shown off in its proper, uh, uh, like in its proper honor, you know, for and sure. maybe they reserve that for just those two characters or maybe they reserve it for a very select few. But I think I would love it, honestly, if every character in the game got six command cards. I'll just I'll just go out on a, and, and, and hot take that now. I think every character in the game should have six command cards. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, honestly, I would, be awesome. love to, I would love to see a character like Boba have access to even more than six. Yeah. Because you think about him having all of these different gadgets the and being so versatile in uh-huh. what he does at any given time. And I feel like your opponent should feel that too. Like, oh my gosh, what, okay. what could he have up his sleeves? And same thing, be, same thing with Cad Bane, right? Like, yeah. And it'd be really fun. If, it'd be really fun if Boba got like contingencies three Boba Fett command cards. Oh, that'd be, yeah, very So if they did too. release, like, nine of them or something, it'd be like, okay, we're going to take three. But we're also going to take three more, just because it's Boba Fett. <laughs> well, and I think that I, and just in general with these bounty hunters, that's that's one keyword that I think is very interesting with these bounty hunters now, with their yeah. independent, is uh-huh. is those contingency plans. Yep. Yeah. That's a good and It's going to be really interesting, especially with a character like Boba, who has the weaker command cards, but... I say weaker, but there's some really good stuff. Like, you know, his one pip, that whip cord can be really strong, but it's really situational on when yeah. you want to use it. So uh-huh. putting that over in contingencies isn't that bad. No, it's, it's, it's really good. I think when I'm playing with Boba, uh, when I'm wanting to, like, in my next few games, when I decide I want to try Boba Fett out, I'm going to be pairing him up with Callus, like, no doubt. Yeah, and I think I'm also going to play him where I'm trying to utilize the independent keyword and getting the aims and dodges more often than actually giving him orders. I think for me, that's going to have to depend on uh, where I have him on the board at a given time, because if I feel like he's in danger, uh, like if he's, and this is, this eventually comes down to how you play your bounty hunters and how you play your Boba, but like, I feel like most of the time with my bounty hunters is I want to have control over when they go because I'm trying to use them like a scalpel, sure. uh, which is which is really against uh, my kind of play style. I understand. I, I realize the person who's who's speaking these words, but um, when I use them, I am always trying to use them as a scalpel, trying to do a very specific task. And I feel like if I'm bringing them, I usually have some way to ensure that they're going to get orders every turn so that I can do that. Um, I kind of do the same thing with Sabine, just like, just so nobody thinks that I'm coming off the walls with this. Um, I try to do the same thing with Sabine where I try to give her an order, like just about every turn, because in, in my, in most lists that I run her, she's my scalpel. Like I pretty much, I think my playstyle might just be, I have one scalpel and then I have a whole box of, uh, uh, other surgery tools that I'm just constantly shaking the entire time, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just seeing what comes out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think for, so it's going to be interesting for me to try and utilize the independent keywords because I don't know how often I feel safe 
not giving them an order because I always feel like I need to control when they go and what they do. And I don't know how many times I want to leave it up to chance. Yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see like how that kind of plays out. And um, as we were talking about that, one of the upgrades that I am finding interesting that I wasn't thinking of using in his comm slot is actually that comms relay. Oh, to be able to pass the orders along? Yeah, to pass his order off, and then he and then also maintain independent. independent. Yeah. yeah, that could be a move. So that's an interesting, yeah, almost using him to be along with another unit who also really needs orders, or maybe sometimes needs an order more than Boba, and you can use him like on another side of the board without yeah. uh, someone who can issue orders to him, but still be able to get orders to where you need them to go. I'm wondering if the if the main thinking behind giving him a comm slot was being able to do kind of what we've talked about with these other units is to be able to, like, give them HQ uplink so that now I, you can have order control over Boba like you need him to have. Because I yeah, remember I, that was one of the biggest complaints that they had back in the day was like, I can't give Boba orders unless it's his turn or unless it's his card, you know? Yeah, I do. I do like uplink. I mean, I think that that's an easy one to fit in that comm slot, if especially if you're looking to make sure you get those orders. The problem with Boba is he also needs both of his actions. So using yeah. one to recover is not as efficient as... right. Cad Bane, which maybe we should just segue there well, into Cad Bane. <laughs> before that, I want to point out my two thoughts on the comm slot for Boba real quick. Okay. And then we'll and then and then we'll move away from this cold blooded killer who works for the Empire. Um so when I was first trying to figure it out what slot to put or what to put in that comm slot now that it's available, my two thoughts were A, the new emergency transponder. Yeah, because that I feel like goes along with the uh, independent keyword that he has, where I would be able to choose one of these things. It would only be a one time deal, but it would be something that I could choose in the moment, depending on what Boba needed. Like maybe I really needed a turn for him to clutch and live. Uh, I could independent, not give him an order, give him a dodge and then emergency transport when he does get his token, get another dodge. Or something like that. So that was a thought, was maybe given the emergency transponder if I wanted to play along with the uh, independent stuff. The other one, and we were kind of talking about this at one point, was make if you made a melee-based Boba Fett now, because he's got that versatile rocket and he's got that extra die in the rocket, he's got the extra die in the boot spike, maybe you decide to skew a little bit into a melee Boba. You could give him, you know, tenacity as his training slot. And what I would then recommend is if you were going to go full tilt into a melee boba, take comms jammer. For sure. Um, because then you're going to stop whoever you're uh, engaged with from also getting an order. Unless it's really, um, you know, in the rare case that you're with somebody who's giving themselves an order or something like that. But um, that would be a really f- I love putting comms jammer on my, like, melee dedicated units because it really disrupts my opponent when they're like, oh, I got to respond, but I can't. <laughs> Well, and even if you, even if you're not thinking you're going to utilize Boba all the time as a melee threat, you could easily put, you know, that four point tenacity on him. Yep. Um, yeah, and just, then just also, because. and then also have that comms jammer like you talked about because of all of those melee threat units like Wookiees or, you know, the, um, yeah, Magna make them think twice. Like, if they do come in and you have a gun line, you have an Imperial gun line, right? Well, Boba's going to slow that that melee threat down because, one, he can tie him up and sit there and take the hits, right? Because he's got the red surging saves. He's got impervious. Like, he he's, he's going to no be slouch. quite solid. Yeah, and then if you're also not giving him orders while he's in those and giving him that extra dodge... Um, and you can even get, you know, the other thing that you could give him is that up close and personal, right? Cause you can, um, you can do your ranged attack still while he's in combat, right? Cause he's got that versatile, right? Yep. So he can get extra dodges from that as well. Like he could be very tanky, um, and just sit there and try to absorb damage from a huge melee threat, whether it's a, 
you know, a, a Wookiee squad or a Saber user even, because with Impervious and all that, he could he can potentially tank all of that. So Potentially is the key word there. Yeah. There, I don't know if my dice hate plays. Boba. I don't know if my dice hate Boba, but I've had a lot of Boba, like, crapping out on my defense rolls and just, like, I, I know I had a game where I played Trista and she was playing Cassian and K2 and, like, one of the, I don't even remember which bugger did it, but one of them shot Boba and did three wounds to him in one shot because I blanked all my defense roll and he was like, well, Boba's dead. Huh. That sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, uh, I think happen. there, I think there's a lot of stuff that you can do with, um, his loadout now and that, uh, that comm slot that makes some interesting choices. All right, so let's move away from one cold-blooded killer who works for the Empire and work our way into another cold-blooded killer who can now work for the Empire. Yeah, Cad Bane, man. So good. In my opinion, biggest splash only because I felt like he didn't really need anything done to him, but he got arguably the most done to him and the most tweaked. It's strong. His independent is probably the strongest. So his independent is dodge two. Meaning whenever he does not get an order, he immediately gains two dodge tokens. And that's at the start of the activation phase. So that's like, that's like your command card token giving time. That's like, as soon as you give those out and then it's like, all right, before the first person activates, Cad Bane gets two dodges. Boom. That's uh, pretty good. Um, he went down to 105 points. Uh, and I should say that I think some of these point decreases on some of these profiles comes from, and we do obviously don't know the rules yet, but from the new uh, role that mercenaries will play and how they can be built into a list, because there is that new command upgrade, uh, Underworld Connections, I was about to call it Friends in Low Places, uh, but it's like five points and it says like you can bring like another Merc, so I think that might, that tax might be played into these lower costs on these mercenaries because you, they're thinking about the tax you may or may not have to pay depending on what your list looks like, so. Yeah. Um, he's got a new training slot because he needed that. Yeah, uh, he, so <laughs> I don't think he needed that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't either, but, uh, as a big Cad fan, uh, uh, Cad Bane fan, I will take it. Uh, I will take all the upgrades he got. <laughs> I will not complain about them. <laughs> um, he got his danger sense boosted from two to three, because again he needed that. Um, and then he also got er- upgraded from surge hit to surge crit. Yeah, that's Which, really uh, good. Wow. Along with that, and th- that he can now play for the Empire. I kind of want to say that Cad Bane feels like the most tweaked, biggest splash of this wave. Yeah, uh, he did get a lot. I might have to give that to you, that he might have yes. gotten even more than Boba. Yes! I just I'm, feel just, like... I'm, I'm putting together like his kit here as, as we're talking, and the same kit that I used to give him it with all the exhaustible upgrades cuz you know he can recover and do steady shenanigans with ascension cables and all that. Yeah. Like our favorite, I have our favorite that, cad shenanigan. Yeah, I have that plus the electro gauntlets plus up close and personal on him and it's still much cheaper than he was before with just offensive push HQ uplink and ascension cables. Yeah. So yeah, he's going to be I mean that with all those upgrades, the up close and personal offensive push, HQ uplink, ascension cables, and the gauntlet, electro gauntlet, still, he's only 138 points. Mwah. Like, it seems really, really good. It is so beautiful. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to go on to say that, like, everyone uses this Cad Bane dumb ascension cables shenanigan to say that it should be fixed because as a matter of fact, I love it. Um, I know that there are people that don't do it. So let's not tell atomic mass games that everyone's doing it. So it needs to get fixed for the sake of versatility uh, and variety because uh, not everyone does it, but I know that you and I love it because it just feels so in, in, it feels thematically right with the character. It feels like a dumb shenanigan that it's like annoying and like Cad Bane, 
It feels Shaking like Cad your, Bane is at this wall. You're like, yeah, dang it, you! <laughs> it seems like Cad Bane is always one step ahead with that build. Like he just always is doing crazy stuff. But honestly, I don't know that like that that's the best build to go with because you do lose out on his independent dodge too. It's true. That's yeah. That's one thing I was going to bring up is if you still bring HQ uplink because if you do, you're now losing out on that independent keyword, which two dodges is nothing to shake a fist at. I mean, I no. guess in this case it is because you're mad at Cad Bane, but you know. I do, I do really like up close and personal on him because his gun oh, yeah. is range two and he has steady, right? Like, so that's going to be really quite a solid upgrade on him. That's and I know we were talking game. a little bit, like honestly, putting situational awareness on him it, with that, like up close and personal situational awareness. He's going to be getting three dodges around, most likely with you know his independent and shooting if that's what you're trying to do with him and you can dodge crits now with him like that seems really good um you still have i mean you have things where you can get like the prepared supplies to give him another dodge that he can just hang on to for whenever he needs it yep he um in the comm slot you can give him that emergency transponder that we have seen now which could then give him another aim or dodge or remove a suppression like he just has access to so many and even with those couple of things like you know let's put prepared supplies on him and the emergency transponder he's only at 121 points with up close personal situational awareness emergency transponder and prepared supplies and he has access like at the beginning of the game first turn you don't give him an order he already has three dodges <laughs> that can dodge crits like he's yep. just not getting touched and then he already has that steady keyword where he just bounces around between cover and you know can do you know or he can make that big push in a turn and jump himself out like kind of in the open a little bit or where he's going to get shot at but when you have access to three or four dodges whatever <laughs> yeah because here's my here's my thinking as well is like i was gonna say maybe one of your training slots now that you've been added one is to consider putting in duck and cover but honestly if you made your big first turn the big dodge play where you just dump a bunch of dodges on him the first attack he's gonna get he's gonna get a suppression on him then you've got you know a couple dodges left over, or maybe you spend all but like one dodge on that attack just to ensure you get no damage and you just get the suppression. Sure, you got it. Now you have another one next attack, and you can spend a dodge there, and you've got danger sense three now. Which right. from a rebel player who has used a lot of gin and uh, units that have danger sense, it's great. Sometimes it sucks, but sometimes it's great. It'll just give you tons of health that you didn't know that you had. Oh, for sure. Um. So there is a lot of play that can be done, there, especially on a white surging defense unit. That's always amazing. So uh, that always feels really good. Yeah, I I like the the different ways that you can build CAD now, and it's not just um, more cut and dry, like what upgrades you're going to want to give him. Right. There's a lot of play now. Yeah. Not to say that there wasn't before, but it feels like there's a lot more now. It feels like there's a ton of potential. I, I do like that they're giving these bounty hunters like Cad Bane and Boba who feel like they always have gadgets or something going on for them. Um, I, I really like that they are giving them all of these upgrade slots and just letting you do whatever you want with them. You want to build a melee Boba? Do it. You want to build a dodge Cad Bane? do it <laughs> like you can you can do all these different things with these with these guys now and it makes them really feel like their characters right these these guys who are one step ahead who have all these different things at their disposal they're always pulling tricks out of their you know sleeves and 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 getting the job done and so I, i'm really excited to see what people come up with with all these upgrade slots and all the options that they they have now with these bounty hunters it's going to be interesting to see i can tell you i'm going to be really excited about running boba fett and cad bane in the same list and just calling it a bounty competition <laughs> Oh, yeah, and just have them fight over bounties. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and just have, like, all right, I'm going to bring all my bounty hunters that I can fit in this list, and they're all going to be competing for one bounty. Um, Bob, it's like, Boba, you're setting your bounty on uh, on Han Solo. Cad Bane, you're also setting your bounty on Han Solo. 
uh, Bosk, you're in this list too. You're also setting your bounty on Han Solo. Well, and <laughs> all three of you are just going to fight for it. Go. <laughs> and I think that's something else to say about that too. You know, we're talking about the independent keyword and wanting to utilize your, you know, bounty hunters when you want to. Yep. Well, when you have two, though, you increase that chance, right? You can give them both independent tokens. Yep. For not getting orders. And then you have a better chance to pull one of them when you want it. And if you're running a, you know, a little generic commander or something with a improvised orders, like you're just increasing your chance a lot yeah. on those. And so the, there's there's a lot of interesting play that can be done now with these guys be having the independent keywords. And, you know, you can still run. If you wanted to, you could still run a Vader. And bounty hunter <laughs> and then you can still run all of vader's command cards yeah. and just keep you know boba's out of it because they're not that great compared to vader's right so and you you wouldn't feel quite as bad because boba's actually getting something for not getting orders whereas before it was like uh do i give vader an order do i give boba an order <laughs> who knows weird thought do we think that maybe that was this was one of the reasons that Vader got a command slot was so he could run underworld connections. Could be. I mean, weird I thought. feel like weird random thought when you said Vader and, Bo- and bounty hunters. I was like, ooh, I wonder if that was part of that. I mean, part of the part of the well, one of the first times we see them, if you're watching them in order from when they came out, right, is when you see Vader show up on. Uh, in the movie with the, his lineup of bounty hunters, right? Yeah, so and that's the, like, uh, and that's the, the he's on the card. Yep, that's the, 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 I, card. That's the actually I have a scene. Uh, when I saw that um when I saw that uh card, uh I have a poster hanging up in my room of that art of a of like Vader in the middle with like all the bounty hunters like surrounding him like a little posse. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, I know that picture. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. really excited for these changes because, uh, I yep. mean, I haven't had Boba in any of my lists since I went to Adepticon yeah. the first year that Worlds was there. Like, that I, I haven't run it. Just, and, and now I can't wait to get the likes of Cad Bane and Boba back to the table. I'm, I, I completely agree. I cannot wait to run all of my cold-blooded killers that work for the Empire. Sorry, it's just funny, <laughs> funny joke, funny joke. All right, there is one more new thing about these three, uh, that these three bounty hunter uh, profiles share in common, Paul, that most people don't know about. That these three are going to be the next three alt art cards that dice time is going to be making. Mm, yes. <laughs> because who doesn't want new alt art cards and who needs these three uh, profiles? Who needs these new cards? Everyone. Everyone. Everyone needs these. So you could get the, I mean, you should, you should get the, uh, the upgrade card pack too. I think that will just be a sensible buy uh, for any player, but should you, you know, desire a little something, uh, something fancier, if you feel slighted against that your old cards are no longer any good, then let Dice Time be the alternative to preach to you, there is a way. You can get these new Dice Time alt art cards, and this will be our official second wave of Dice Time alt art cards, because the first wave is uh, pretty much run dry by this point. Um, and at some point, we would like to get new ones of those printed off, but I am currently in the works, not currently, uh, I'm not a great multitasker when it comes to podcasting. Uh, the new cards will be, are, are underway. We already have the card, Cad Bane one, because that was part of our first wave, so uh, now that card's a relic, you can just throw it away. Don't throw it away. Um, but we have a Boba and a Boss also in the works, and we're going to be printing off those three and they're going to have the dice time backs and everything. They're going to be vertical, like our character cards are for uh, for dice time. And they're going to have all the all the fresh keywords and all the fresh changes are going to be baked onto them. And uh, 
those are going to be rolling out later this year because we would like to debut them like we did our first uh, at our first Dice Time Alt Art cards at Gen Con. Is it too early to talk about Gen Con, Paul? I don't know if it's ever too early. I've gone once and now I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's a it's very it's a very easy slippery slope to uh, fall down. Uh, you have one good year at Gen Con and then you have to go back every year for the rest of your life. And uh, I don't know anyone that's said otherwise. So uh, anyone who has said otherwise uh, hasn't gone to Gen Con. So. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, so there is going to be Legion at Gen Con this year. Uh, Atomic Mass Games will be there and they will be showing off more, uh, awesome Legion stuff. Uh, I have no doubt. Uh, so when we are going to be there, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think Paul, I don't think you confirmed for, uh, having a ticket in either of the Legion pods. Uh, no, I, no. I do not. This I, is fine. I am cool. choosing Gen Con is not going to be my miniature gaming convention <laughs> that's fair you did you did go to, to adepticon yes i will be so. going to adepticon for that and gen con is going to be more my um Fun i want to go games. see all the stuff and play some games here and there it doesn't mean i won't um want to play a game of legion while i'm there it's just i'm not going to participate in the big tournaments at gen con i don't think which is fair um, save your miniature desire for uh, playing Zinvaded while you're there, if you must. Yeah, I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in getting some games in that I uh, don't get to play very often. Which is um, fair. So yeah, it'll be it'll um, be a fun time. I have it. My schedule is pretty open right now, so I want to nice. be able to go around and talk to people and see stuff. And very so, nice. Yeah. You can you can come hang out with uh, Trista and I any day. By the way. Or are we we, oh, we we love will. forming a party. Oh, you yes, will. Yes, we will. I think you're confirmed. Are, are you are you going to Funkoverse actually? Uh, I have tickets for Funkoverse. Oh, sweet! Except they we're not going to be on the same the team. team. So this but... is, yeah, this is going to suck. <laughs> all, right, all right, real quick before we get into that, uh, the but uh, actually myself and as far as I know, uh, feel free to add your name onto this list if you're also going to be playing. But Sean from Friday Night Fights is actually going to be at Gen Con. And he's going to be playing in the same pod as me on Thursday, uh, the first pod for Legion in Atomic Masses Games' event. So that is going to be the first day where I'm going to be uh, shaking hands, kissing babies, and handing out altar cards. I don't know if they're going to be in that order. Uh, <laughs> if you brought your baby to Legion, uh, I, sure, sounds good. Sounds like a good uh, heavy unit to bring, in my opinion. But the... Yeah, but those cards, I want to be handing those out to uh, everyone that I meet there. So if you see me, I'll be definitely rocking my uh, my Friday Night Fights jersey that I've been given, uh, or that I, I mean I I paid for it, but I was given it I was given it to me. Words, uh, but it is but yeah, we're I'm sure a group of us are all going to be having those. So if you find uh, if you find the one that has my name on the back, or since our nicknames are on the back, uh, Ladies Man will also be there. <laughs> As denoted by the community, uh, the I will I will definitely hook you up with those altar cards. I definitely I plan to have a ton of them. I plan to hand out most all of them at that event if I can. So please don't miss out coming to Gen Con 2022. Come get your come get your updated altar bounty hunter cards and uh, be awesome. Otherwise, I'll just we'll just love to see you there at Gen Con because uh, it's going to be a blast. Absolutely. And we're gonna have uh once once we get to that point, we are definitely gonna have another uh round table. Uh at least you, me, and Trista, if we meet some crazy people who absolutely must be involved in our entire weekend tirade of uh madness, then we'll we'll throw them into. But we're definitely gonna have another Gen Con episode where uh we just uh go into all the craziness that happened during that weekend because that's actually, Paul, I don't know if you knew, but is is one of our most successful episodes. Uh that most people when I talk to you, when they when they tell me that they've listened to Dice Time, that's usually the episode that they bring up as being like one of their favorites or one of the ones that they remember the most. That's awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, we can do it again. I would love to do it again. Uh, Paul, are you are you are you r- touching my foot? Was that you? Are you playing footsie with me? No, I I thought you just touched me. No, that you def I haven't moved. I've been standing still because I'm too scared of what could be in this water, which I think just touched me again. So I'm starting to panic. Yeah, uh, uh, it, yeah, it just it some touched me. We we gotta get out of here. Three PO. 
Three PO, are you there? Oh, thank God, the doors are opening. Okay, so we got to get out of here. Uh, thanks everybody for listening uh, to Dice Time. I hope you had a Dice Time listening to us. And until next month, go out and get your Dianoga games. Okay, it's sliding past my leg. I'm walking. Uh, go out and get your Dianoga games in. Go have some awesome fun with new cards and bounty hunters. And I'm Ben Jetron. I'm Paul Watson. Go out and make today even better. Have a good night. <laughs>